Hey travelers, Mag and I here on day 80 of our trip around the United States. This morning we're starting off from the beautiful Redwood Falls here in Ramsey Park along the Ramsey Park Sway Bridge. This morning is a deceptively easy day. We have 320 miles on the agenda today, but we're already going through a series of pages we've been through and some counties we've been through as well. So our target list is about as short as it is for any day. So we decided, since we didn't have all that much we had to do today, we were gonna sleep in until 4.30 this morning, and it felt great to get a few extra Zs. Now we're gonna go ahead and enjoy a tour around this park, starting with the river here, and then get on the road for our miles for the day. We have no other virtuals beside this bridge we're sitting on, but we do have a few earth caches today, so it looks like we're gonna have some more scenic viewpoints in. So let's come along and see what we have between us and Minneapolis today, let's go. At a whopping 219 acres, Ramsey Park is actually the largest municipal park in the state and often termed the Little Yellowstone of Minnesota. We started off our tour of the park from the Ramsey Bridge over the Redwood River. This spot alone makes a trip to the park more than worthwhile. It would be easy to sit just over the top of this bridge and watch the river flow over the rocks for hours. Clearly, Aichan enjoyed this scenic view from the river as well, but not nearly as much as we enjoyed getting to check out all the animals at the nearby zoo. She absolutely loved being able to walk next to the edge of the enclosures and smell each of the different animals they had here. And the goats were so much fun. The last time we paid to feed the wildlife, it turned into a feeding frenzy and was very exciting. Let's see if this time turns out the same way. This big boy clearly knows what the sound of a quarter going into that machine means. He could not wait. Oh, they already know. Look, he came right up to the fence. Oh, he's gonna ram you, Aitchan. Look, he don't like it. You want that? Does that look good? It does look good, doesn't it? Here, I'm gonna toss it in for you. Ready? Here. Get it, get it, get it. Oh yeah, your, your buddy's coming too, huh? Oh, he wants some of that. How does a goat say thank you? Just like that. Look at that, huh? Come on, let's go over here and get a closer smell. There's one thing she knows for sure. She's never seen or smelled a bird quite like this before. And chickens too? Oh, you're in luck, Aichan, look at that. She seems particularly fascinated with chickens. And in this case, the chickens seem fascinated with her too. What's on this side? We got roosters too? Oh my goodness, Aichan. So many smells today. This tour was the favorite part of her day. But it just didn't seem right to visit Ramsey Park without having an opportunity to view Ramsey Falls, so up we went. As with the other falls we've seen around Minnesota this week, there was not that much water flowing, so the waterfall was not as heavy as it might be under other conditions. After that, it was time to get on the road, but a trip to Lake Redwood seemed in order. The funny thing is, there's a micro geocache hidden on the tank right next to this viewpoint, but after our issues yesterday, we didn't even try it. We did, however, pull up to a quick stop in Marshall when we noticed this memorial park. Surprisingly, this park was only dedicated a few years ago. And as we do with any veterans memorial we pass in our travels, we had to take the full tour to see everything it had to offer. The decision to establish this everlasting tribute honors the sacrifice made by military veterans, firefighters, and public safety personnel throughout the years. The entire memorial is arranged in a circle around this centerpiece, with everything facing inboard toward it. Each statue around the circle represents a different branch of the military, with each branch represented by the time you complete the entire loop. I felt honored to have the opportunity to visit this brand new veterans memorial and be able to share it with all of you as well. And as luck would have it, when we reached our next stop in Madison, we got to visit yet another veterans memorial. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm either unwilling or unable to skip any veterans memorials I see anywhere along the ways in our travels. Our biggest surprise of the day came when we reached Big Stone. We had thought this was going to be a quick in and out, but once we reached the National Wildlife Refuge, we knew that we were in for a treat. 
This place includes nearly 12,000 acres of prairie grassland and is set up for an auto tour between April and December of every year. There's no getting out of here fast because you want to coast along at a very slow speed so that you can take in all the wonderful views this spot has to offer. And with only less than 1% of tall grass prairies remaining across the United States today, it's a rare opportunity to come and visit a site like this. While here, you can enjoy many other recreational activities as well, including wildlife viewing, hunting, fishing, hiking, and boating, but not with a motor. Just a couple miles down the road from the National Wildlife Refuge, you can also visit the Big Stone County Museum. Although the inside of the museum was closed at the time of our visit, we were still able to enjoy a tour of the exterior grounds. There is a nice paved walking trail that walks all the way around these preserved historic buildings, monuments, and sites. And, similar to what we saw yesterday, there is also a collection of old farm equipment on display too. I enjoyed looking at everything they had laid out, although to be perfectly honest, I don't think I know what a single one of these things does. Unless they were used as medieval torture devices, and then I could probably take a few educated guesses. And the best part of our tour of the grounds was that there was a geocache hidden amongst all of this treasure. We just had to slip in and make the quick grab. And treat ourselves to the satisfaction of signing a logbook. After that, we waved a quick goodbye to Paul Bunyan's boat anchor, which we are at least led to believe was a real thing. And then we made our way down to the Minnesota River headwaters. From this spot, the Minnesota River begins its 330-mile journey to the Minneapolis-St. Paul area where it eventually empties into the Mississippi River. Once it joins up with the Mississippi, it continues its journey southward where it eventually drains into the Gulf of Mexico. After soaking in all the great views this area had to offer, we popped near a local library to see if we could find a geocache. And sure enough, there it was taking a look at us from inside this book. And our last stop of the day was the highly debatable world's largest ball of twine. Sorry, but the actual largest is in Cocker City, Kansas, and it's added to every year during a twine-a-thon. Well, we did it. No, no, no. We didn't just do it. We absolutely crushed it today. We managed to make it through all of our miles, all of our targets with no issues. Admittedly, we avoided the issues because after yesterday, I just didn't want to play with any of the difficult caches. So a lot of those really tough caches on the list, I just moved right past and went to the easier ones. We had a great day out there today. We started out the morning at Redwood Falls. We got to tour around the zoo they had there and I just enjoyed getting to see all the animals and all the smells. And then we actually got to go up and see Redwood Falls itself. From there, it was a lot of country miles today, which was okay. We were just covering ground and since we didn't have really any new pages to cover, and since we'd already been through a lot of those counties, we had big jumps with a lot of time on the road to just relax and reflect on what's come before us and what's coming up on ahead of us. Definitely the big surprise of the day was Big Stone. I did not expect us to have as much fun there as we did, nor did I expect for it to be so scenic. Between us getting to see the lake, the museum, and the National Wildlife Refuge, that was really one of the best parts of the day. All in all, we had a fantastic day today, and we're really looking forward to tomorrow because we really have no road miles whatsoever to cover tomorrow. Tomorrow is gonna to be dedicated entirely to Minneapolis and St. Paul. We're gonna spend our time touring around the city, seeing the sites, and doing all the best geocaches we can find on the map. So really excited about that because it's really gonna be kind of a relaxed day compared to what we've had for the last week or so. Like this video, subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates, and we'll see you out on the trails.